So another reading from Failsafe, The Kennedy Curse, fused with science fiction fantasy, written by me, Susan Meeling, Reverend Susan Meeling, Reverend Meeling, Lady Dory Bell, got a few nicknames. <clears throat> so, I'm going to start on a different page. Uh, actually, I might start on that page. So, Ganesh looked to the Buddha who moved closer to Maggie, wrapping his loving arms around her soaked business suit. He looked towards her eyes adoringly and smiled while reminding her she was destined for this event. Complaining to him and the group of the problems and aggravations throughout the existence, Loki jested she could always repeat the life, reminding her if she did not get the mission correct in this existence, just like the prior ones and all others, Maggie would repeat until all had been rectified properly. Shrugging his shoulders while turning away, Loki had intrigued Maggie's interest, and Confucius came out from the shadows with Sun Tao. Both joined the telepathic conversation discussion, stating Maggie had looked through the one book the most powerful individuals would do anything to look through. Together, they handed the Akashic Records to Maggie and reminded her to read through the patch passages if she needed guidance or assistance. All moved to their feet once Maggie had stabilized her balance and the vertigo had left, not needing to hold on to anything or anyone. Wrapping all of their loving arms around Maggie while she held the book, the cave underneath the ocean glowed. Kali Ma reminded Maggie of the orders for the underwater crop circles to commence in uniformity with those on land for a purpose in the upcoming years. Ganesh whispered in her ear with Set, they would always protect her and keep her safe. Anubis jested along with them. He would happily tag along and grab any remaining souls that went weary of the path. Maggie chuckled while the rest spoke of their wishes and purposes, wants and needs and desires as best as each moment allowed. Towards the end of the group commentary, Maggie looked to everyone with a smile, expressing her gratitude for their understanding and help. Walking back towards the pods, the group helped Christopher and Maggie to settle back inside of the pods, giving each a few last pointers and various signs to pay attention to. The group closed the door for Christopher's pod. The salt water mixture quickly filled his container, and the spinning began quickly, returning him to the surface, staying with Maggie a few extra moments while they all laid their hands on top of her head as the light flowed from their hands and illuminated their beings. The light returned and filled her being, allowing several pairs of wings to expand within the containing area. Surrounding her with illumination, they were stopped in awe. Abruptly, the cloaked male alongside of the first president of the United States of America to push through the crowd. The cloaked male and each individual leaned together towards her head, whispering into her ears in unison, with General George S. Patton yelling, First, they will ignore you. Then, they will laugh at you. General Patton cleared his throat to exclaim, Later, they will fight you, but then you, Maggie, will win. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. whispered, The ultimate measure of a woman is not where she stands in moment of comfort and convenience, 
but where she stands in time of challenge and controversy. President Ronald Reagan moved closer to say, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Sighing before President Reagan added, we did not pass freedom on to our children through our bloodstream. It must be fought for and protected to hand down for them to do the same. President George Washington stated, it is far better to be alone than to be in bad company. Benjamin Franklin knelt closer while leaning on his canes to softly say, the Constitution only gives people the right to pursue happiness. One must catch it for oneself. Mahatma Gandhi whispered, happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. President Washington added quickly, happiness and moral duty are inseparably connected. Sophocles cloth swayed while moving to ask before moving away from Maggie's ear. I would prefer, I would prefer to fail with honor rather than win through cheating. Will you be similar to the statement or to the honor claimed not for yourself, but by others? Will you give them the respect and honor that they are due? Mike Michel de Malciog stated while waving one hand, valor is stability not of the legs and arms, but of courage within the soul. Benjamin Franklin said, either write something worth reading or do something worth writing about, preferably both. Mahatma Gandhi added, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service to others. President Reagan clearly stated, reject the idea that every time the laws are broken, society is guilty rather than the individual lawbreaker. It is time to restore the percept of each individual is accountable for their own individual actions. President Washington calmly stated, the Constitution is the guide by which I will never abandon. Mark Twain shook one finger, adding, patriotism is supporting your country all of the time and your government only when it deserves because it has earned the respect. Julius Caesar confidently entered the room as his voice echoed upon his declaration. Love in the name of honor, more than ever, fearing no death. President George Washington whispered his question. Few have the virtue to withstand the highest bidder. Are you capable of keeping honor more valuable than monetary means? General Patton stated, you need to overcome the tug of people against you as you reach for higher goals. Moving closer and pushing the men aside, Dr. Martin Luther King added, mankind must learn to live together as brothers or perish as fools. G.K. Chesterton's voice stated, Courage is almost a contradiction in terms it means a strong desire to live, taking form in the readiness to die. Aristotle added, those who cannot bravely face danger are the slaves to their attackers. Benjamin Franklin stated, do not fear your mistakes, for you will know failure. Continue reaching out and you will achieve your necessary success. General Patton declared, success is how high you bounce when you have hit the most rock bottom. Dr. King Jr. whispered into her ear, I have decided to stick with love because hate is too great of a burden to bear. Mahatma Gandhi added, live as if you were to die tomorrow while learning as if you will live forever in eternity. George Orwell's voice whispered from seemingly nowhere, 
People sleep peacefully in their beds at night only because of the women and men who stand ready to do violence upon their behalf. President Dwight D. Eisenhower's voice declared loudly, people who value their privileges over their principles soon are to lose both. Plato solemnly said, only the dead have seen the end of war. A woman's voice repeated another's words. If one reads a lot of Chinese literature, there has always been a strong female figure as educated heroine, warriors, and weapon-trained women. Slowly drifting to sleep before she awoke days later in her room, General George S. Patton added during her vanishing, It is foolish and wrong to mourn the women and men who died. Rather, we should thank the divine such individuals have lived. Understanding their separate messages, the two discussed the group's intentions and needs among Maggie and Christopher. In the ocean, the group continued talking about the upcoming events together, detailing the ideal plans to genuinely and fully rid the world of war. Some laughed while others among the group were far too serious for the other's taste. Most remained stern in their stature during the conversations and discussions, though most broke into a chuckle at random. Before the group dispersed to return to their works, President John F. Kennedy walked with his mother Rose Fitzgerald and sister Rose Marie Kennedy. Listening to the commentary of Joy Witchcraft could no longer be a punishable offense legally in Maggie's homeland. The pod sent out a final bright beam of light before completely disappearing, sending Maggie and Christopher back to their residence. The group slowly dwindled to just a handful of individuals sending hopeful prayers while remaining silent, knowing that all up until that point, only the dead saw the end of war. But would the day come? Because knowing the time would be only a few years, all could and would take a sigh of relief. President Kennedy cleared his throat audibly to declare, they have not asked what their country or universe could do for them, but soon they will know what their destiny will be and what their call to action is. Rose moved closer to her son to whisper in his ear, saying, I will pray all of the works out for the best, though Stalin, Hitler, Machiavelli, and a few others have a bit of advice for them too. Her son looked at his mother with startled eyes as she shrugged her shoulders to say, We shall see how the dragon is awoken from her slumber. Turning to walk away from her son, President John F. Kennedy, she chuckled, when the time arrives, we shall see. Running behind his mother, he called out to her while she mumbled to herself, waiting for JFK to catch up. When you want something talked about, one goes to a male, but when one wants something completely completed properly, you always seek out a female. Thanks for listening and watching this video. Subscribe to my channel. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. This has been a reading from the excerpt of Failsafe, The Kennedy Curse Fused with Science Fiction Fantasy.